Hello and welcome to this story called The Project. Lots of you are getting ready for the PMP exam and you're trying to understand how all the pieces fit together. So we're gonna go through a quick scenario, a little story, and I'll show you how the pieces fit. Now, this group of people over here, they're known as the Portfolio Steering Committee. The Portfolio Steering Committee decide what gets done and what doesn't get done, what gets into the portfolio, the makeup of the portfolio. So they decide that the project will be done and this project in order for it to be done first needs to be authorized. So them deciding to go ahead and do it is one thing, but it needs to be authorized. The project charter needs to be created. The charter is a document that authorizes the project. And the charter is created by someone known as the project sponsor. And many times with the help of the project manager, this is our project sponsor. Her name is Tanya. Tanya is going to create the charter with the help of the project manager. And here's our project manager. Our project manager is Pradeep. Pradeep is gonna work with Tanya in creating this project charter. And this project charter is gonna authorize Pradeep to apply resources to the project. He's not very enthusiastic about it, but whether he likes it or not, the project charter is going to authorize him to apply resources to the project. And that's the first stage. So. Pradeep now has a task, and that task is to identify the project stakeholders, to identify project influencers and end users. So we often use this phrase, identifying project stakeholders or identifying project influencers, if you will. Now, there are all sorts of people who could be affected by this project to be precise. We have a group of stakeholders and we have a core team of stakeholders and they've all got an opinion. That's right, they've all got an opinion about what, in quote, the software will do. And these stakeholders aren't very easy to work with. They can be a little bit difficult, so just keep that in mind. Now, Pradeep has started identifying these stakeholders. He's gonna put them into something called a stakeholder register. And a stakeholder register, is just a tabulated document that has the names of the stakeholders, and some other criteria about them, the phase they might may be most interested in, whether they are positive, neutral, resistors, things such as that. But the fun is just starting. You see, Pradeep has a huge task in working with the existing stakeholders and some new team members that Pradeep is going to end up acquiring. And what they need to work on is a project management plan. Now, a project management plan is not built in a day. A project management plan needs, uh, in some instances, months for it to actually come to fruition. So there's quite a lot of stuff that's gonna go into this project management plan. But at first, Pradeep needs to work with the team on deciding how all the baselines will fit and then fit all the baselines and plans together. So there's a lot of stuff that's gonna go into this, okay? And I want you to think about all the things that go into a project management plan. So the end goal is to create a project management plan. Now, to give you a very good idea of what this plan could look like, I will need to show you the plethora of possibilities. There are many things that you could think about, and these are on page 89 of your PMBOK guide, sixth edition, by the way. And not every single project uses every single component of a project management plan, but I want you to think about this visual. Think about it being like this. You have a project manager working with a group of individuals, team, and as you can see on the screen, each area of the project has its own plan. We have a scope management plan, a cost management plan, you can see a procurement management plan over there, a schedule management plan, so on and so forth. So the summary of the entire planning process group is this. We will put together a plan 
that is all encompassing, covering all areas, integration, where we decide how a project will change if it needs to, what checks and balances it will go through. The configuration management plan addresses configurable items such as sub deliverables, entire deliverables, how we will version control drawings and other documents and other artifacts. We then talk about scope management, schedule management, cost management, and each of these areas has baseline, scope baseline, schedule baseline, cost baseline. Each of them has plans, quality plans, resource management plans, communication management plans, risk management plans, procurement management plans, stakeholder engagement plans. And think about all of these. The confluence of them all is the project management plan. This is what you get as a major output of the process. So you can probably relate to the big task that Pradeep has in creating this plan. So the project management plan is created. And of course, there are so many pieces that went into this. So let's think for a second what exactly went into the creation of this project management plan? In this question, it says, you're in the process of defining, preparing, and coordinating all plan components and consolidating them into an integrated project management plan. When is this process performed? Is it throughout the project? Is it once or at predefined points in the project? Is it just at the start of the project? Or is it in the closing of the project or phase? Well, the answer according to the PMBOK guide is B. It's once or at predefined, predefined points in the project. Now, to give you an even better idea of how all of this interweaves, why don't we take a look at that map on page 25, that map that shows you the entire world of the processes. So what we have summarized in a few sentences here is all that happens in planning can be summarized. All of this stuff that happens in planning, we can summarize it as the creation of a project management plan. It's basically saying all roads in planning lead up here to our project management plan in some way. That's the summary of all that I've been saying. So you get the idea that this project manager creates the project management plan with a team. And what do the stakeholders say? Are the stakeholders happy? Well, that's to be decided. We're gonna find out if they're happy or not. But the next step after creating the project management plan is execution. Execution of the plan. And what do we get from the execution of the plan? Well, from executing your plan, for one, you're going to end up getting a deliverable. And that is a major thing you're trying to achieve, this deliverable, okay? This deliverable will be checked, it will be optimized, we'll make sure it's correct, and then it is going to be checked. But as you are going through the project, you're also making other checks and balances. We call this monitoring and controlling. So as you're working the project, you're checking to make sure everything is going according to plan. Remember everything that we talked about in the plan, you're checking to make sure it's going well. Ultimately, as you check your deliverable, you're gonna end up getting a deliverable that is verified. In other words, you've checked the deliverable and it's good to go. It's good to go to your customer. Your customer is free to check it and inspect it. Now, also in monitoring and controlling, something else of significance happens. That verified deliverable goes to the customer. And if the customer inspects it and decides this is good, what we end up getting is an accepted deliverable. And if the deliverable is accepted, 
guess what that means? It means that Tanya, our project sponsor, is part of the process. So when we talk about the inspection of the deliverable, we got to remember our sponsor could get involved, end users could get involved, but ultimately our sponsor has a huge say. And if our sponsor doubles as a customer, an even bigger say, right? So the bottom line is this, the deliverable is accepted. And at that point, we can transition this deliverable to our customer, finally, whoever our customers or end users are. So think about it like this. The sponsor is on this project, not the ultimate customer, but a huge part of the process. Assuming we have some customers, some end users, you know, who represent the customer, they're gonna be using this. Well, the idea is that we will transition this deliverable over to them eventually. And that stuff is done in close project or phase. And you might have heard of this process called close project or phase. This is the closing process group. The process group is known as closing. The actual process is known as close project or phase. And there's a transition of the deliverable to the customer. Okay. At the end of the project, when all is said and done, this is where the project manager should give an account as far as how the project went. Was the goal achieved? Have some of the benefits been realized or not? And that is what happens at the end. There is a final report. And that's pretty much how it works at a super high level, my friends. If we go through the process again, it starts off with the portfolio steering committee or the powers that be agreeing that a project should happen. The project charter is developed. We identify stakeholders, put them in a stakeholder register. These are some of our stakeholders here. And of course, these stakeholders will also double as some of those who at the end of the project may be end users or their departments. Now we create the project management plan and the project management plan is going to drive execution where we get our deliverable. Monitoring and controlling is where we inspect the deliverable that we got. And this is also where your customer inspects the deliverable. So there's gonna be another inspection, which happens in order to give us an accepted deliverable, right? So there's an inspection, an inspection here to give us a verified deliverable that happens as part of control quality. There's an inspection, inspection here, which happens in validate scope, but ultimately, that deliverable is good to be transitioned to the stakeholders or the end users. And let's not forget our stakeholders. We've got our stakeholders here. They're also part of the puzzle. And let's say it's their team that's going to use the end deliverable, whatever that is. And a final report is created. There's a final transition. And that's really it. It's a summary of all of the 49 processes. I hope you found this to be useful and I hope it helps your thinking because everything else, everything else that happens in project management is going to plug in to one of these. All those tools and techniques and stuff that we talk about, a lot of the tools and techniques you probably can decipher that they will plug into execution or monitoring and controlling, a lot of them do. Some of them used in closing, like regression analysis, but for the most part, a lot of the tools and techniques you see, they are used in executing and monitoring and controlling, and quite a lot of them are used in planning right here. So many of them are used in planning. So the, the question is, where do the tools and techniques of your biggest concern plug into? Look at where they plug into, know where they plug into, and it makes things so much easier easier and bearable. For example, earned value management is used here. 0.6 SPI means we are behind schedule, right? 
for your exam, no things like your CPI is 1.2. That means you spent a dollar and you got $1.20 out. It becomes so much easier to see where things plug and play. Do you have any questions on specifics of the 49 processes or similar maps? I'd like to know. Why don't you drop me a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you and I'll speak to you soon. Don't forget to hit like and share with your buddies.